a brief. <laughs> yeah. So let's just skim through. Okay. Right. So you've just arrived today yeah. for Euro uh, Eurostars. That's right. Have you done anything like this before? Well, yeah, since, uh, since Eurovision, I think only 2013, I didn't have any uh, Eurovision parties. In the meantime, 2014 onwards, um, I had a minimum of four a year. Which, which four, is really a year. four a year? Wow, that's awesome, isn't it? It's really cool, actually, because uh, you get to re relive one of the, I get to relive one of my biggest, uh, one of the biggest moments in my life. You know, like when I'm uh, singing this is the night, when I'm talking about it. Uh, you get to see people you've, you've met before in Eurovision scenario. Uh, you get to meet new friends in Eurovision scenario. So, uh, how was it for you when you when you were on stage when you when you were performing this is on your night? How did you feel up there? Um, <laughs> the thing is, you rehearse so many times before the actual Eurovision itself mm -hmm. that, uh, and you're always rehearsing in front of a huge audience. Right. So the first time you get the shock is when you're doing rehearsals. Uh, other than that, it's like you're doing the same thing. And you know how it is, like the first time, you're really nervous, but then when you do something over and over again, of course. it gets easier. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I wasn't excited, because I was like, very excited. Um, uh, but I was lucky because since a younger age, I was exposed to theater and uh, you know, like television and stuff. So in a way, I didn't get that shock. The only difference is that when I did a performance, instead of getting 100 messages, mm -hmm. I get I got like 10,000 messages. Oh. You know? This is why you didn't answer my letters. For that. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> to be honest with you, I do I do sometimes. What I do sometimes is I go on my Facebook and I click on unread messages, mm -hmm. and I so randomly select 20 people, right. and I text them back to that's say. A, that's a nice way to do it. That's yeah. a really nice way. But I, it's it's virtually impossible to of course. to be able to reply to everyone. I would love to. It would be another career, wouldn't it? it would you'd be, you'd would need be. a PA for it. Probably what I would do is I'd have to have an office of like 10 people and pay them wow. a full-time wage. Wow. It, is, it is nice though, it is of nice, course. you have to say. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so obviously Malta has been in it quite a few years now and still haven't won yet. I think uh, I was told statistically we are the, the country that has been in it the longest and have never won. Now, after Portugal, have of won. Of course. Apparently. So, so therefore... I'm quoting the experts. So if that's the case, then Port Malta is the next one to win. You never know. You never do, you think, know. do you think, we'd, do you, think you would? Would you come back? Before I would love to come back. Um, Maybe do you work with Chiara? <laughs> <laughs> You can both wear a pair of Zarbon. In fact, everyone's been commenting about my shoes today. I was going to say, are they Zarbon? Yeah, no, they're, they're, well, it's Zarbon, yes. Oh, Zarbon. <laughs> Zarbon, yes. Um, uh, well, they're, they're my, the cheap trainers that I found, but they look cool, so... Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah but like, you think they're expensive, they really aren't. Which is, which is fine by me, because... Perfect. You know what I mean? Don't spend a lot of money, it still looks good. I okay. love them. Uh, to be honest, <laughs> to be honest, uh, with, with me, Eurovision, it's a, it's a temptation every year because uh, it comes around obviously once a year. Mm -hmm. And when I was eligible to do it again was 2014, because they actually removed the five-year. Uh, before there was like a five-year. Oh, there was a rule, was it? Yeah, so you couldn't like, go back like the last five it. winners couldn't per, couldn't uh, enter. All oh, right. Which in a way doesn't make sense, but you know, it, it was a way of giving the opportunity to uh, other singers as well. Because they have a lot of um, new singers over there, don't they? Um, that <clears throat> it's, it's, it's a whole it's a whole new like. I won five years ago, and I won against. I'd say 60% were people who had entered more than once, mm -hmm. and 40% were new newcomers. Right. This year, it was 80% newcomers. Wow, that's, that's, that's good. Cause they, it's, it's a good way for them to start off in, yeah. in the music business. Of the thought, yeah, so it's, it's the best platform we have on the island. To be yeah, fair, my 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 concern with with Malta, as in obviously I'm Maltese, I'd love Malta to win mm. Eurovision. So we've we been someone enough to come for a holiday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, for sure it would be fantastic for the economy. I think, but our, our biggest challenge is because geographically we're so small. Now you'd say, what does that have anything to do with the fact that, you know, there's less people to pay taxes, mm -hmm. you know, so there's less of a, a kitty, right. there's less of a pot sure. to spend on, on the Eurovision performance. And there's that, and also there's the fact that we do not have any record labels on the island. So to have a good record label to support the act would make a huge difference. Uh, but again, the most important thing is that there's a, a strong message behind the song, you know, a good message. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we, we live in a world where 
everything is either too frou frou and lovey dovey, but in real life it isn't. Mm -hmm. You know, like we live in a world where there's so many people hurting each other and uh, there's war and hunger. And, uh, you know, on the other hand, music should be representing what people feel. Mm -hmm. You know, it should be act like an advocate of course. for our feelings. Definitely. And what music is doing, in fact, is the complete opposite. You know, like the top hits are songs about money, about drugs, about sex, which is fine. It's that money. Has the, that it's has the, it's, it's has money, the, sex, <laughs> drugs. Is another but story. they have their place, don't they? But of course, you, you know, know you've got to think. You, you're, you're thinking you need to um, um, cater for everybody in Europe, and you've got to sort of have a feel exactly. for that. Exactly. And the truth is, at the end of the day, uh, when you had songs like Rise Like a Phoenix, for example, it had quite a strong message to it. Mm -hmm. When you heard the, the song of Jamal, uh, very that strong was message. Amazing, wasn't very it? political yeah. orientated as well, but you know, still nonetheless, we are the heroes, man. Again, it's a good song, mm. but had a really good message. Of course, yes. you know? it is. To get the balance right is it, very, very, it's very, true. very. Tricky. But then obviously there's the core, there's the, the business side of it where the, rec the record label makes a big difference, a good record label makes a big difference mm -hmm. because uh, for example a record label would, it would be in its interest to have that song played on all the radios in Europe. It's very sad that unfortunately in the UK they don't. They don't, no, they don't play the Eurovision song, very very rarely. You know, it's, it's sad because it's missing out a whole audience. Mm -hmm. The the thing what I what what I mean obviously every every everyone has their own opinion right uh, I think that the English don't take Eurovision seriously exactly you know exactly. I mean it's on BBC yeah so but there's so many great artists in the UK so if, there are many fantastic artists if the if the BBC took it seriously they would give us more than just one program to select our winner. I was talking to this uh, just a moment ago. Um, <clears throat> if we had a series of events or a series of contests to make it more serious, because unfortunately, over the last 15, 20 years, it's become kitsch, and people do take the mickey out of it, but they don't. They, you know, they'll talk about it, but they won't necessarily admit to watching it. They'll watch it and they'll secretly like it, but they don't want to actually come out and say, "Actually, I quite like that." They won't say that. Yeah, some of us will. Yeah, yeah. You know, because we're we don't have to be, to be honest, you, you know you know for me, what the moment Justin Timberlake stepped on that stage in Sweden, it goes to show that a lot of people no. watch watch oh the show. God, I know. When that was announced, we were over there that week we were announced. Oh, I, and you didn't know? Yeah. You we, knew before that he was. No, we didn't know. You didn't. No. I knew. I don't know how. Well, Someone told. Well, somebody's told you. Yeah, probably. Then tell us. What's your contact? <laughs> yeah, I, I need to. I need to remember who told me. But I don't know why. I knew before that he was performing. We were. We were. We were in there and in in, in Stockholm. And it's, oh my God! Wow! I don't believe this is this is happening. And watching the artists coming through, and, and there was Justin, and they were they were they were like, oh, like this. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. It's super. I, I think they did it a lot, mostly for the American uh, market. Well, yeah. I mean, but at the end of the day, there's what 200 million people watch Eurovision. Mm -hmm. I mean, what harm is there going to be performing on a stage like that? Exactly. You know, exactly. someone who's already established. Yeah. You know, he launched his his track uh, "Can't Stop the Feeling." There. Fantastic. And, and, how, and look, it's still it's still on the charts now. Two uh, mm -hmm. two years later. Yeah. Yeah. It's not top forty anymore, but it's still on the charts. I, I it still ranks. I hear it every time I hear it. I think, yeah, I'm there. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm back exactly, there exactly, exactly. Yeah. So there's there's no like for me people who uh, who look down on Eurovision, so to speak, they have no idea what they're talking about. Exactly. The thing is, it's it's a platform for a different variety of music. You don't get not all the songs are cheesy, not all the songs are are ballads, not all the songs are sad, not all the songs are in English. So it's it's a it's a show with different styles of music, you know, at the end of the day. Of course. I mean, this year, my two favorites were Bulgaria and Norway, personally. No way. Grab the moment, and yeah. Bulgaria. No, oh, he was an so, awesome guy. The young one. I, what was the name of the song? The Bulgarian little lad, yeah, I can't remember the name of the guy was, but he was only about 18, wasn't he? It was, it was yeah, so, yeah. amazing. Those are, those are my two favorite songs this year. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a real good thing for Croatia. The song, My Friend, My Friend. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> 
That was cool for me. That, for me, I, I like it, but for me that's cheesy. So, but again, I, it, I, works, I, it works. I see, I see where the cheese is coming yeah, in. Yeah, so yeah. I get that. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's all different. And the thing is, I'm lactose intolerant. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's oh, oh, no, it is. It, it is. It is. No, oh, oh, yeah. No, is, that, is, that a, is that a Maltese thing? <laughs> no, no, it's. Uh, no. No, no, uh, no, 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 no. Only recently I found out that I've got some intolerances. And I'm a chef, so. It's like that a, must be seriously frustrating. Yeah, it is, it is, it is. Oh god, I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't live without cheese. I'd have to just go and shake myself. I swear. Well, <laughs> it's good to keep the, to keep the weight down. That's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about my set. I'm talking about my set. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So, what are you going to perform for us tonight? Are you obviously you're singing your Eurovision song? Yeah. Um, what else will you be doing tonight? I'm going to open the show with, I'd say, one of the top ten. Eurovision songs of all time. Okay, good. Don't tell us what it is. Yeah, that's what we're singing. Um, I'm going to sing my favorite Italian entry of all time. Okay. Because obviously Malta has a big influence um, from Italian, because especially with my generation, uh, before cable came in, we would watch our cartoons in Italian, because Malta is geographically like underneath Italy. Right. And we would get the signal. On our TV. Right. So, channel to watch. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> we I grew up that's how I learned Italian to be fair, like watching cartoons. And uh, so obviously we have that. And then I'm playing two songs from my Love on Mars album. Um, the album I launched a year after Eurovision. And um, I'm I'm gonna also perform a track that we launched, my band and I launched a month ago, two months ago. Fantastic. It's called Heatwave Song. Heatwave Song. Because Malta at the moment, the summer was one of the hottest summers ever. Of course, I looked at the map today and I thought, oh my god, it's so hot. So obviously it's quite cool over here. That's like for winter, I suppose, for, 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 for you, isn't it? For, yeah, this would, be, this would be our kind of winter. Or maybe autumn. Do you know what? Years and years ago, uh, when I was, I was only six, there was a little girl came over from Malta. Her name was Daniela, right? And she sang a song on a TV show, and she saw snow for the first time. She'd never seen it. it hey, the first awesome. time I saw snow, I was twenty. So right, <laughs> it's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. Well, for us, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. true. But yeah, uh, so, so tonight I'm looking forward to tonight's performance because uh, I'm going to do some Eurovision history in a way, mm-hmm. uh, and then two songs from my own album, uh, a song that I love because now. I'm transitioning from, uh, it's like I've got two separate careers mm-hmm. as a performer. One is as Kurt Kalea, you know, ex Eurovision representative, TV personality, mm-hmm. actor. <laughs> no, because last year also I did Rock of Ages, uh, I, was, I was cast as the leading role, which was a fantastic experience. But then also um, a different style of music, uh, I'm with my band called Narrow Lane. Right. And uh, we're working on our own material, you know, in a way growing outside of the Eurovision comfort zone. Of course, of course. And then it, it, for me, when I'm performing with Narrow Lane, I can easily put in two of my own original tracks mm-hmm. in the concert. What, what style is, is, is that? I would say it's a mix between uh, Coldplay, Daft Punk, Maroon 5. Those good. are those are our biggest influences. Mm-hmm. Our guitarist is very much Guns N' Roses. Right. So he, when, when we're covering, it's definitely not Eurovision style. That's for sure. That's it, right. Yeah. But when we're covering our favorite songs, he tends to give it a bit more of a rough edge. So it's not like we're covering the song and doing a copy of it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, my brother Kevin who was with me in the Eurovision. Um, is also part of the band. He does backing vocals. He sings sometimes. So it's a band with two to three singers. You know? So you've got a bit of variety there. You've got yeah, like so. So the show is not me singing the whole course, two hours. Yeah. It's uh, sometimes I take a back road and I play the piano, and uh, my brother sings or, or Kirsten, the guitarist, sings. So it's good fun. So it sounds like a lot of fun. Sounds it is fun. Yeah. And the thing is about Narrow Lane, it's like it's like a kitty of different. We're we're a band made of three solo artists and two backing musicians. Right. So my guitarist has. His